Good evening. Glory to God. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> As we continue in the battle of righteousness and lawlessness. Hallelujah. Continuing the battle of obedience against disobedience. Would you turn your swords in tonight's training session? I'm going to tell you the title right off the bat. She. All right, we can wait. <laughs> the title tonight is Victor or Victim? Glory. Revelation 12. You know, you got to come out of being a victim and become a victor. Yeah. Everybody falls into a state of being a victim, but it depends how long you stay there. In verse 7, some people live their whole lives in victim. Yeah. What was me? Let me tell you that when you are an individual that lives a life of victim, you are bound to the soul. It is impossible to walk in the spirit if you, become, if you live a life of a victim. Amen? People manipulate with the spirit of victim. We just saw that with, uh, uh, what was his name? Judge Kavanaugh. Amen? being persecuted from somebody that was proclaiming to be a victim who was actually a liar. In verse 7, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was our place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, who deceives the whole world. He hasn't stopped, okay? I just want you to know that. It's still going on. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That's what principalities are now. They are angels of Satan's kingdom. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, My, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser. Everyone say accuser. accuser. See, one of the things the enemy does is he accuses you before the throne, but he accuses you personally too because he wants to keep you in a state of victim. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, in you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. Does everybody understand? How many of you know that the devil knows his time is short right now? Amen. Literally. He knows that he's getting locked up. He's been out on bail for a while. For thousands of years he's been out on bail. But he's getting ready to get locked up for a thousand years. You don't think he's going to do whatever he can? Again, he accused us before God, and he accuses you daily to remind you of your past, your mistakes, your failures. He wants to bring shame, guilt, and condemnation on you. Things that we could have done and things we didn't do. Hmm. Now, again, I want you to understand something. In other words, things that we could have done and things that we didn't do to prevent some afflictions. Amen? But God turns everything to the good, doesn't he? To those who love him. It's not always what we've done. It's why we did it. Does anybody grab hold of that? It's not always what we have done. It's why did we do it? Why did we do it from the beginning? One of the things that 
cause, a lot of the things that we have done is because of the cause of rejection, oppression. Two major influential spirits that will keep a person in a state of victimization, if that's a word. Sounds good, though. Praise God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Remember, the word says, I was afflicted when I went astray. Amen? So after affliction, because we went astray, remember, affliction is when God lifts his hand and the enemy attacks. But God has not left. He's waiting for us to repent so he can come back in. Now he uses that part of affliction to train us. Remember, he's the commander in chief. He's the master trainer. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, which is a what? Memory lie, remember? Something that you agreed with. Now, I want you to know that these memory lies is things of your past. This is where the enemy loves to come and put you in the state of victim and not victor. Verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge, the truth, the power of God, bringing every thought into captivity, every thought and the captivity to the obedience of Christ. Let me tell you, if you don't read your word, how, how are you going to know what the thoughts are? You have nothing to compare. I can't tell you how many people call themselves believers and they don't read the word of God. And they have nothing to compare with. And they become a victim. And because they've gone astray, they were afflicted and they stay in that affliction. Some people stay in that affliction to the day they die. Because they refuse to compare the promises and covenant, what God says. They refuse to repent. They refuse to turn. And two spirits that protect this victimization, two spirits that promote it, okay, is rejection and oppression. Two spirits that protect it, is pride and fear. So there's two spirits that promote it and two spirits that protect it and keep an individual in a state of victimization. It says here now, taking every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Again, if you don't know the word, how do you know the obedience of Christ? It's impossible. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Again, our weapons are against the voices of the enemy. Amen? What God is trying to do, our weapons are used to combat them, the voices of the enemy. And what are they used for? To release us from victimization to victor, to victorious. And if we're not, first of all, one of the things is you've got to be able to recognize What's happening? If you're not recognizing it, then you're in a state of bondage. And Psalm 55. and call yourself a Christian is shameful. I'm going to say that again. To live a carnal life and call yourself a Christian is shameful. Verse 
It certainly brings no glory to God. Psalm 55, and starting at verse 1. Victim or victor, victim or victor, either way. Victorious! Or you just be a victim. A woes is measies. Verse 1, let's get it. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily. In other words, everybody hears you. <laughs> because of the voice of the... Because of the voice of the... Because of the voice of the... Oh, snap. So this dude's complaining, he's moaning, he's groaning, he's probably blaming. He's a victim of the voice of the enemy. Does everybody get it? He's in a state of oppression. He's probably felt rejection. You know, you don't even have to be rejected to feel rejection. Amen. Does everybody get that? Just the spirit of rejection that comes up and reminds you that you were rejected. <laughs> it could be something stupid. I think people get rejected by a candy bar. <laughs> when that didn't taste good enough. It's rejected. <coughs> Hallelujah. Verse 3. Because of the voice of the enemy and because of what? The oppression of the wicked. For they bring down trouble upon me in wrath. They what? They hate me. My heart is severely pained within me. Anybody been in that condition? Don't raise your hand. Because if you didn't, you'd be a liar then. <laughs> in my heart, my heart is severely pained within me. And the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. And horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. In other words, he's looking for escape. Anybody fall? Don't raise your hand. We've all fallen in that state of like, you know, I'm done. I need to get out of here. Amen? <laughs> I would... Fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off and start brand new. <laughs> and remain in the wilderness and become Robin Hood. <laughs> Destroy, O oh Lord, and divide their tongues. Now he's stepping up. <laughs> He's come to reality. He's coming out of victimization and into victor. Why? Because he's starting to attack. Amen. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in this city. Day and night they go around it on, on their walls. Iniquity and trouble are also in the midst of it. Destruction is in the midst of it. Oppression and deceit do not depart from its streets. Hmm. Again, the voice of the enemy brings oppression, deception, which leads to destruction. Amen? Psalm 11. pain. That's what the purpose of rejection is. The spirit of rejection comes to bring an emotional pain. And let me tell you, somebody could do something and it wasn't even against you and you could feel rejected. Amen. That, believe me, when the enemy sets up, remember he's daily setting up traps. He's trying to get us into a state of rejection, state of oppression, and we become the victim. Psalm 11. And listen, and the pain is real. 
It's not fake, it's real. The pain is tremendously real. Sometimes when people lose loved ones, they can fall in that victimization. The enemy is attacking. You know, if you would have just done this, if you would have done that, maybe their life would have lasted longer. Amen? Forget it. God is the one who says who stays and who goes, not you. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Let's speak it. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, my emotions, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow on the string, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If its foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Again, the wicked shoot at the upright. Where? In heart, the heart of emotion. To promote victimization. Victimhood. It's an organization. Did you notice that people get around and when they start complaining, they're trying to outbid the other complainer? Well, you don't understand. I've been through this. Well, yeah, well, I went through this. Well, yeah, I went through this. Well, man, we just got an organization of victimization. They started their own church. <laughs> then rejection, oppression comes and man, they just feed one another and, and every spirit from hell shows up with an apron, a fork, and a knife. Like the roadrunner or whatever. No, no, coyote. Acts 10. And of course, the words are always saying, you don't know what I'm going through. But God does. Oh, happy days. <laughs> Acts 10. Victor or victim? Victorious. Acts 10, 37. Uh, 36. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Let's speak it. That word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. With the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him oppressed so you got to understand something that the devil's focus is to not only deceive you but he wants to deceive you in a state of oppression so that you live a life as a victim and you're really no good to the kingdom anointed by the Holy Spirit to heal those oppressed in other words taken captive they were taking captain of, again, the protector of victimization. Of the promoter is, anybody remember? Rejection and oppression, right? And the protector is fear and pride. And that's what keeps them in captivity, because it protects. They are chained by emotional rejection and oppression by the voice of the enemy, keeping people in a victim state of being as long as they can. Why? Because that state of being feeds demons. Hebrew 12. Many people go back to the uh, alcohol, drugs, and whatever. Pornography, they... They, they'll alter some of their addictions because their, uh, uh, their addictions lie to them and say, I'm going to relieve you from your oppression. Yet it promotes more oppression. Then they go to the doctor and the doctor gives them a pill of oppression. 
Double oppression. And they never look at the side effects, which is oppression and suicide. Hallelujah. That's the medical field. Hebrews 12, verse 12. Let's speak it together. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of what? Bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become what? Defiled or contaminated. How many of you know oppression is a contamination? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Wow. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was what? He was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. In other words, he cried, 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 but never truly repented. Does everybody get it? Was rejected. He didn't find true repentance. But he did a lot of crying. There must be a, an area where an individual does it, what we call a direct repent. Directed repent. Right to the area what God is looking for to bring to light so it can be put under the blood. 2 Corinthians 7. Second Corinthians seven verse eight. I mean uh, verse six. Second Corinthians seven verse six. Let's speak it. Nevertheless, God who confronts who comforts the what? downcast, that's oppressed, aren't they? Comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not only by his coming, but also by the consolation with which he was comforted in you when he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoice even more. But even if I made you sorry with my letter, I did not regret it. Though I did regret it, for I perceived that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to what? Repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted. But sorrow of the world produces what? Death. E. So godly sorrow, not worldly sorrow, no, the godly sorrow will lead you to victory, to be a victor. Worldly sorrow will keep you as a victim. I'll say it again. Godly sorrow, which leads to repentance, will keep you, bring you to a state of as a victor. But worldly sorrow will keep you in a state of a victim. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And the word says that a joyful heart is good medicine. Amen? So when a person is oppressed or in a state of a victim, victimization, their heart is not joyful and they're easily sick.
Philippians chapter 2. Verse 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and not become blamers and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Work out your victimization. Does everybody get it? To become a what? Victor. Praise God. You know, there's a lot of false martyrs. People think that when they fall into victimization, they're martyred for Christ. Oh, this is just the sufferings of Christ. No, you brought it on yourself. Why? Because when you went astray, you got afflicted. So you bring this. Oh, does everybody get this? You know, so many times there's trying to be an exchange blame game. Well, man, if such and 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 such, then I wouldn't have been such and such. Snap it. Just step out of it. Fight like the psalmist. What did he say? I began to fight. Lord, rip their tongues in half, you know. <laughs> Remove from me this plague of oppression. Take authority. You know what's hitting you. Your emotions are a sign of what's there. Well, I feel this. Well, then get rid of it. Amen. Don't pet it or feed it. Don't let it grow any longer. It's going to finally grow up and kick your butt. 1 Peter 4. In other words, we, again, you've heard me say already, don't let the devil rest. <laughs> Get rid of it. Don't let a nest in you. 1 Peter 4, verse 12. 1 Peter 4, verse 12. That's what I said. Okay, thank you. Is everybody there? Good. Hallelujah, let's speak it together. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning a fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when he is glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are approached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of the glory of God rests upon you. On their part he's blasphemed, but on your part he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters, or a gossiper, or a slanderer. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God, and, and if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God, not according to the will of man, not according to the desire of the soul, but according to the will of God, commit their souls to him in doing good as a faithful creator. Amen? Again, there's a lot of self-imposed afflictions by going astray, being victimized. Victimized. And falling into the bondage changed by, chained by oppression and fear. And basically oppression and rejection too. Until hashtag walk away. Amen? Amen. With repentance and humility into victorious. So they turned their victimization into victory. 
just walk away. You know, there's a lot of those. It used to be all in the bumpers. It says, just say no. I mean, you remember, it was about the, just say no to drugs. You try and draw, tell a 20-year drug addict just to say no. <laughs> he sees that bump, sticker, wants to pull the bumper off. He can sell it. <laughs> Ephesians 4. I'll teach that bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians 4.25. They are putting away lying. Leech. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole... Steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearer. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all what? Bitterness. How many of you know that what bitterness is? That person's in oppression. It's already been taken captive. Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. Did you ever get around somebody that you, it's like, did you ever hear that saying, walking on eggshells? Yeah. It's like, snap, man. You want to put those shells together and put an egg in it and hit them. <laughs> Tell them to wake up. Amen. Come out of oppression and get in the victorious life of Christ. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. See, hashtag put away. With all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. Oh, unforgiveness will definitely put you into the state of victimization. Forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And the next verse says, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Hallelujah. <laughs> Put it away. Hashtag walk away. Forgive. Move out, of, move out and up from victimization to victor. Again, remember, the protector of oppression and rejection is pride and fear. Romans 8. Victor or victim? I think people switch roles off and on. I think I'll become the victim today. The deception of the voice of the enemy which promotes emotional distress. Amen? Romans 8, 18. For I consider the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For creation was subjected to fertility not willingly but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because creation itself also be delivered from what? The bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Remember, bondage is oppression. For we know that the whole, world, whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, great, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait it with what? Perseverance, endurance. We are in need of endurance big time. Amen. Praise God. Bondage is a victim's oppression. 
in Ephesians chapter 2. You know, you think about how many years the Israelites were in bondage, 400 years. You know, when they were born in bondage, you know, you think about this. I, I, I don't, it said that millions were taken out of Egypt. Does everybody understand? I mean, they went into the wilderness. And Moses led them out. But because the bondage put them in such a state of victimization that they, they had to be led out because they couldn't fight their way out. Because if you really think about it, they could have probably turned around and took the Egyptians by surprise. They probably outnumbered them. I mean, I don't know what the number was, but... Because they didn't, they didn't even consider. They wanted to escape because of their oppression, feeling rejected by God in this bondage state of being, with fear and pride of who they were, kept them in this place and state of heavy oppression and victimization. They were paralyzed to fight. God had to send Moses to get them out and lead them out. And that's all they did was grumble and complain the whole time. Even when they came out. So they escaped from Egypt, but Egypt was still in them. God put them in the wilderness to get Egypt out of them. Amen? Amen? Ephesians 2, verse 1. Oh, happy day. Ephesians 2, verse 1. Is everybody there? Praise God. Let's speak it together. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, the prince, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive with Christ, for by grace you've been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at, when a person is a victimization, they have no idea that one of the things that begin to happen is identity is beginning to be erased. It's beginning to be erased. Now remember, the enemy is always going to try to erase your identity. If he can succeed in erasing your identity, you are totally out of position. You are oppressed and taken captive. And the enemy will start to steal, kill, and destroy anything that you're involved in. And raised us up together, made us sit in, together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, God's plan, you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So, by grace, you've been saved through faith. God, you've been saved by God's plan because of your connection with him. Does everybody get it? Because faith is what? Connection. Amen? Hallelujah. In other words, we are slaves of oppression, deception, fear, pride. We are carriers of the label of victimization. But now we are label carriers of victory, victors in Christ Jesus. In James chapter 1.
Victor or victim? Oh, happy day. James 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Now, count it all joy. Why? Because if you don't count it all joy, you'll fall into victimization. Remember, there's a specific word you have to say. What a challenge. What a challenge. So when you fall into trial, it's just, what a challenge. Not, what was me? Amen. Or why me? Amen? What a challenge. Remember, it's like a chess game. Life in this realm is like a chess game. For those of you who never, then it could maybe it'd be a checker game to you. I don't know. <laughs> maybe a poker game. I don't know, you know, but. It's, 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 it's a challenge. Everything is a challenge. Amen? God's betting on you, though, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. My brother, count all joy when you fall into various trials, not if. Knowing that the testing of your connection with him produces what? Endurance. But let... Patience or endurance have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete in lacking nothing. And if you lack, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it all liberally without reproach and it will be given to him. And let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind for let not that man suppose he'll receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Amen? You know, when a person gets in a state of oppression and victimization, they are unstable. You can't trust that person because they're so led by how they feel. Trials of perfection and freedom from victorization to victor. Victimization to victor. Amen? God, I can't read my writing sometimes. <laughs> Trials of perfection and freedom from victor, victorization to victor. Victimization <laughs> to victor. Faith is the connection to the life of his presence, his power, and his truth. Unless you're willing to pull out the sword and start combating, you will stay in that position. James 3. If you've been falling into victimization, you'll find that you are negative, not positive. Amen? That's where you got to go hashtag walk away. You got to pull out the sword and start cutting the tongue off the enemy. And tie your tongue into a bow afterwards. James 3.13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Mm. But if you have what? Bitter envy. And self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. See, and many people, when they fall in this victimization and oppression, they run to the world and try and get wisdom, and that's all it does is it puts water on the seed, and, 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 or what you might call wood in the fire. It makes it worse. It's got a false healing to it. It's a temporary emotional fix, but it doesn't go away. It keeps that person oppressed. Amen? For where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion 
and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Hallelujah. First John chapter one or first John chapter five. And verse one, first John five, verse one, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten by him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and to keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our what? Our faith, our connection. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who follows, believes that Jesus is the son of God. So you got to understand something. One of the things oppression does is nullifies faith. When a person falls into victimization, their faith has been strangled. And God is trying to restore it as quick as possible before there's no life left in it. Because we must keep faith alive. It's called faith to escape. Everyone say faith, faith. to escape. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Now you know this is a training session, but it's also a warning session. Psalm 61, we'll close here. Psalm 61, starting at verse 1, let's speak it together. Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings for you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life. The, his years are as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So I will sing praise to your name forever that I may what? Daily perform my vows. Daily perform my vows. In other words, what you've been called to do. Because you can't perform the vows and fulfill destiny in a state of victimization. Amen? You can only be in a state of victor to be victorious. Everybody got it? Praise God. Father, we are blessed and highly favored, and we just thank you for your word. We ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus that what's been imparted in us will be quickened to us in remembrance by the Holy Spirit, that you would expose our enemies of oppression and rejection, knowing that the enemy is always trying to set us up in rejection and offense, and continue to expose pride and fear, the protectors of those evil spirits, that we may walk away, that we may maintain the connection of faith and that it would allow us to escape in every area, snaring our enemies in their nets while we escape safely. Lord, we are honored and blessed. We commit it to you. We give you all the glory for the release of your prophetic word this evening. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Hallelujah.